You're listening to One Gospel, version 4.0, a unique harmony of the Christian Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Narrated by Heath and Holly, music by CJ, featuring the artwork of James Tissot. This is episode two, and we're continuing with John the Baptist's teaching, an overview. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came for testimony to bear witness of the light, that all might believe through him. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which gives light to every man that comes into the world. John bore witness concerning him and cried, This was he of whom I spoke. He that comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. Out of his abundance we have all received, and grace replacing grace. For the Torah was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus the Messiah. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. John the Baptist's Ministry in the Judean Wilderness In the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, when Herod was tetrarch of Galilee and his brother Philip was tetrarch of Iturea in the region of Trachonitis, and Lysanias was the tetrarch of Abilene, and when Annas and Caiaphas were the high priests, the word of God came in those days to John the Baptist, the son of Zechariah. He came in the wilderness of Judea around the Jordan baptizing. He proclaimed a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, because the kingdom of the heavens was near. For this is he who is written about in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet. Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you, a voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley will be filled, and every mountain and hill will be brought low. And the crooked will be made straight, and the rough ways will be made smooth, and all flesh will see the salvation of God. John was clothed with camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. Those from Jerusalem, all the region of Judea, and all the region around Jordan went out to him. They were all baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. He saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees and the multitude come to be baptized by him. Then he said to them, O generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not begin to think within yourselves, saying, We have Abraham as our father. For I say to you, that God is able to raise up children to Abraham out of these stones. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. And the multitude questioned him, saying, What should we do then? He answered to them, He who has two tunics, let him give one to him who has none. He who has food, Let him do likewise. Tax collectors also came to be baptized and said to him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than what is appointed for you. The soldiers also questioned him, What should we do? He said to them, Do not extort any man by intimidation nor accuse falsely. Be content with your wages. The people were in expectation, and all reasoned in their hearts concerning John, whether or not he was the Messiah. John answered, proclaiming to all, I indeed baptize you with water to repentance, but one who is mightier than I is coming after me, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and loosen or bear. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire whose winnowing fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly cleanse his threshing floor and gather his wheat into his storehouse, and he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. 
and with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the gospel to the people. Jesus is baptized by John in the Jordan. When all the people were being baptized, it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. And John forbade him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you come to me? And Jesus said to him, Permit this now, for in this manner it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he permitted him, and Jesus, when he was baptized by John, he went up immediately from the water, and while he prayed he saw the heavens open to him, and the Holy Spirit of God descending in a bodily appearance like a dove, and coming on him. And a voice came from the heavens, saying, You are my Son, the Beloved, in whom I am well pleased. And Jesus was about thirty years of age. Jesus' temptation in the wilderness. Then Jesus, filled with the Holy Spirit, immediately was led by the Spirit from the Jordan into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil, Satan. And in those days, he was in the wilderness, not eating anything for forty days and forty nights. Afterward, when they had ended, he was hungry. When the tempter, the devil, came to him, he said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And then the devil took him up to the holy city Jerusalem and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, cast yourself down from here, for it is written, He will give his angels orders concerning you, to guard you carefully, and on hands they will bear you up, that you do not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, and has been said, You should not test the Lord your God. Again, the devil took him up to an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, I will give you all this authority and their glory because it has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will fall down and bow to me, all will be yours. Then Jesus said to him, Get behind me, away with you, Satan, for it is written, You should worship the Lord your God, and you should only serve him. And when the devil had ended all the trials, and the devil departed from him for a season, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels came and served him. John testifies about Jesus in Bethabara. This is the testimony of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, I am not the Messiah. They asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you that we may give an answer to those who sent us? What do you say concerning yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord as the prophet Isaiah said. Those who were sent were from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why do you baptize then if you are not the Messiah, nor Elijah, neither the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but there stands among you one whom you do not know. He who is coming after me is preferred before me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to loosen. These things came to pass in Bethabara, beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day, John saw Jesus coming to him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, this is he concerning whom I said, After me comes a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me, and I did not know him, 
but only that he might be manifested to Israel. Because of this, I came baptizing with water. And John bore witness, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, On whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and bore witness that this is the Son of God. Jesus meets Andrew, Simon Peter, Philip, and Nathaniel over the next two days. Again, the next day, John was standing with two of his disciples and looking at Jesus as he walked, said, Look, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speak and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What do you seek? They said to him, Rabbi, which is translated as teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying and remained with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated as the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. When Jesus looked at him, he said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah. You will be called Cephas, which is translated as a stone. The following day, Jesus wanted to go into Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him, of whom Moses in the Torah and also the prophets wrote, Jesus from Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said concerning him, Look, a son of Israel indeed, in whom is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, you believe? You will see greater things than these. He said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, after this you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Jesus' first miraculous sign in Cana the following day. The third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. The mother of Jesus was there, and both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. When they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what does that have to do with you and me? My hour has not come yet. His mother said to the servants, Whatever he says to you, do. And six water pots of stone were there, placed according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing twenty to thirty gallons apiece. Jesus said to them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Draw some out now, and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. When the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made into wine, and did not know where it was from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew. The master of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, Every man sets out the good wine at the beginning, and when they have drunk freely, then the inferior. You have kept the good wine until now. This beginning of signs was performed by Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Jesus travels from Capernaum to Jerusalem for Passover. 
After this, his mother, his brothers, and his disciples went down to Capernaum, and they did not remain there many days. The Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And he found in the temple those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, and the money changers sitting. When he had made a whip of small cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, and also the sheep and the oxen. And he poured out the money changers' coins and overturned the tables. He said to those who sold the doves, Take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of your house has eaten me up. Then the Jews answered to him, What sign will you show us, seeing that you do these things? Jesus answered to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then the Jews said, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you'll raise it up in three days? But he spoke concerning the temple of his body. When he had risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this to them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. While he was in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, many believed in his name. When they saw the signs which he did, but Jesus did not commit himself to them, because he knew all and did not need anyone to testify concerning a man, for he knew what was in a man. Nicodemus meets with Jesus. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, This one came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher that came from God, for no man can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter into his mother's womb a second time and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it. You cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. In this manner is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered him, How can these things happen? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel and do not know these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things, and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you the heavenly things? And no man has ascended up to the heaven except he who came down from the heaven, the Son of Man who is in the heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have, ever, have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. He who believes in him is not judged, but he who does not believe is judged already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and men love the darkness rather than the light. For their works were evil, for everyone that practices evil hates the light, neither comes to the light that his works should not be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his works may be clearly seen, that they are worked by God. John the Baptist and Jesus baptize in Judea. After these things, Jesus and his disciples came into the land of Judea 
and there he remained with them and baptized. John was also baptizing in Anan, near Salim, because there was much water there, and they came and were baptized, for John was not cast into prison yet. Then there arose a question from the disciples of John with Jews concerning ritual cleansing. They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he who is with you beyond the Jordan, to whom you have testified, look, he is baptizing and all are coming to him. John answered, A man is not able to receive anything unless it has been given to him from heaven. You yourselves testify for me that I said I am not the Messiah, but that I have been sent before him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, who stands and hears him, rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. He who comes from above is above all. He who is from the earth is earthly and speaks of the earth. He who comes from heaven is above all, and he testifies what he has seen and heard. And no man receives his testimony. He who has received his testimony has certified that God is true. For he whom God has sent speaks the words of God. For God does not give the Spirit by measure. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. He who believes in the Son has eternal life, and he who does not believe the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God remains in him. Jesus passes through Sychar in Samaria on the way to Galilee. Therefore, when the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus did not baptize himself, but his disciples did, He left Judea and departed again to Galilee. He needed to go through Samaria. And he came to a city of Samaria called Sychar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Therefore Jesus, being weary from the journey, sat by the well at about the sixth hour. A woman from Samaria came there to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink, for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask for a drink from me, being a woman from Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Lord, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well, and drank from it himself and his sons and his his cattle? Jesus answered her, Whoever drinks from this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks from the water that I will give to him will never thirst. But the water that I will give to him will become a fountain of water in him, springing up into eternal life. The woman said to him, Lord, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You have well said I have no husband. For you've had five husbands, and he whom you now have is not your husband. In that you said truly. The woman said to him, Lord, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither worship the Father on this mountain nor at Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such to worship him. God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit 
and in truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah comes, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I, who speak to you, am he. Then his disciples came and they marveled that he was talking with the woman. Yet no one said, what do you seek? Or why are you talking with her? The woman then left her water jug and went her way into the city and said to the men, Come see a man who told me all of the things that I ever did. Is this not the Messiah? Then they went out of the city and came to him. In the meantime, his disciples urged him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. Therefore the disciples said to one another, Has anyone brought him anything to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest? Look, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white, ready for harvest. And he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit to eternal life so that both he who sows and he who weeps may rejoice together. And in this that saying is true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you have not labored. Other men labored, and you are entered into their labors. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him because of the words of the woman who testified, He told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans had come to him, they asked him to remain with them. And he remained there two days. And many more believed because of his own word and said to the woman, Now we believe not because of what you said, for we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Messiah, the Savior of the world. Now after two days, he departed from there and went into Galilee. Coming up next with one gospel, Jesus' early Galilean ministry after John's imprisonment.